And now for today's Bible question. Today we have seen how the Lord was betrayed by a close friend and denied by another, and mocked before wicked men. They sought his death and felt just in their plans to execute the man who is the Lord of glory. They bartered with a traitor, interrupted Jesus' earnest prayers so that they could arrest and accuse him falsely. Why they were not convicted by their own treachery is remarkable indeed. Someone might ask the question, Why did Jesus say to his disciples, Pray that you may not enter into temptation? When Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, he asked his disciples to pray, and then left them and went a short distance and prayed himself. When he returned some time later, he found them asleep, and Luke tells us that they were tired from sorrow. They seemed to sense the impending collision between their master and the Jewish authorities, and Jesus had just spoken to them about his body being given for their sakes. Perhaps they were getting a better grasp of what was going to happen to their Lord, and sorrow filled their hearts. The hour was late and they were very tired, so they dozed off to sleep while Jesus was praying. In Matthew and Mark, Jesus also added the words, The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. But why did Jesus say, Pray that you may not enter into temptation? A great spiritual battle was underway, and Jesus found it necessary to pray for strength to face that battle. Angels came and ministered to him to strengthen him in his prayers. Not only was Jesus about to enter the greatest spiritual battle of all, his disciples were also to face their own battles, as they would watch men take their Lord, bind him and lead him away, and later shout for his crucifixion. Their faith would be severely tested, and their loyalty to him greatly challenged. Judas failed because he was never a man of true faith and Peter buckled under the pressure to save his own skin, and all the disciples fled in fear. Jesus' call for them to pray was what they needed to find the spiritual strength to face their coming circumstances with courage and godly submission. This is what we see in the Lord himself, as all the wicked intents of men and Satan gathered around him like an angry pack of dogs. He remained calm, and steadfast in his purpose. The disciples had lost their courage, and fearing for their own lives forsook him and fled. These men could have attained greater spiritual strength to face their fears if they had been able to recognize their need to pray. Prayer is that secret weapon of the believer that will grant strength, peace, courage, and wisdom to weather the greatest storms. Spiritual warfare is very real, and those who take it seriously will make a spiritual impact in the world, but those who are spiritually dull can have little impact when spiritual forces attack. The trouble with us is that like the apostles, we are weak in the flesh. We want to pamper our flesh, and so we give way to the wants and needs of the body and compromise the spiritual activities. Just as muscles need to be worked to keep strong and fit, so a believer must labor at prayer if he wants to make a difference in the lives of those he is praying for. To train muscles is hard work and discipline, and it is also painful. Some would rather not bother with the pain and hard work, but if someone desires to be strong, they know uh, it will cost them the pain and the labor. So often when we go to our beds at night, we spend a few moments in prayer. We say some quick prayer to convince ourselves that we are spiritually healthy. But we cannot dedicate serious time to prayer when we would much rather take our rest. The devil will do everything he can to keep you from praying. He will provide you with a thousand distractions and make sure you're so tired that you just forget to pray and go right to sleep. We satisfy ourselves with excuses as to why we cannot spend longer in prayer. It is not a matter of going to all-night prayer meetings hoping that our wishes will be granted. God wants us to be alone with Him 
and to get serious about prayer and the spiritual concerns in our lives and the lives of those around us. Perhaps you're going through some difficult spiritual battle right now. Have you gone to the Lord for a serious time of confession, thanksgiving and intercession? Learn how to pray earnestly and with agony of spirit until you see the sunshine of God's countenance bursting upon your life and circumstances. But realize it will not be easy, for prayer is work and it is costly, but those who labor at it will reap due reward if they faint not. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. James chapter 5 verse 3